Now, tapering itself is a very simple operation in which you produce a cone-like feature on your workpiece. Now, the way we're going to be doing it, because there's more than one way to do it, is using the compound rest. Now, let's get straight into it and I'll show you how it's done. This is your compound rest. This is where the tool holder post resides. And you'll notice that in most operations, the crank is locked in place. And this is because for the sake of rigidity, it's locked. But if we unlock it, you'll notice that it travels in the same direction as your carriage crank. If you unscrew the four bolts that hold the compound rest in place, and put the compound rest at an angle. Then when you turn the crank for the compound rest, the compound rest itself will move at an angle. So this allows us to cut at certain degrees, allowing for the formation of a taper on your workpiece. So let me show you how that's done. First thing you're gonna to need to do is find an Allen key set. In this case, I already have my size ready, 5 sixteenths. So I'm going to take it and loosen ever so slightly all the four bolts that hold the compound rest in place. Not too difficult and you don't have to loosen them completely, just ever so slightly. So now that the compound rest is loose, you can put it at an angle and secure it. It's like turning, but at an angle. So I'm going to put it to 5 degrees counterclockwise because we want the taper to cut away from the workpiece itself and produce a cone-like pattern rather than an inverted cone. So once you have it at your desired angle, all you have to do is retighten those bolts. And it's always a good practice to check the angle hasn't shifted while you're tightening the bolts. So proceed to tighten all four bolts ever so slightly but leave your compound rest lock loose because you're gonna use the compound crank to cut at that angle. Similar to turning, but without using the carriage crank. So you'll notice that now that your compound rest is at an angle, what happens to your tool? If you try to insert your tool in parallel to your actual compound rest, your tool is at too much of an angle. And now you risk not only cutting at an incorrect angle, but also rubbing the tool and the tool holders against the actual workpiece itself. So now what you need to do is angle it the best you can so that it doesn't interfere with any part of the actual workpiece itself. And if you're having difficulty gauging this, then what you can do is bring your tool closer to the part itself. So check if the travel path interferes with the workpiece. And do this all by eye. And once you're happy and you know that nothing's gonna interfere, you can proceed to actually cut your part. So now we're gonna go get a better angle of this and show you how it's done. So that's all there is to taper. It's pretty simple, right? All right, well, thanks for watching tutorial number five. We'll catch you in the next one.